Well, this is my first image, and I want to ask you to take a good look at it, because at the end, I'm going to show it in a somewhat different way, so maybe you have already some fantasies about it. So <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm uh, trained in the archaeology of the Merovingian period, and this period is, of course, known for its, its cemeteries. And because of that, the focus has been uh, on the deposition phase of grave goods and on uh, maybe the type of chronology of uh, grave goods as well. And uh, therefore, I want to propose to look at the, the grave goods from cemeteries in a somewhat different way. That's more than 20 seconds, isn't it? Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, uh, because of that, um, I want to look at uh, the pre-burial life of grave goods uh, in an integrated way and systematic way. That's my proposal, what I want to do here. And uh, what I want to do here is not only talking about um, that, but also about the research question it, pr it provides. And uh, in doing so, I want to make some, uh, I want to uh, use the strings of beads and the belt fittings as examples. Uh, well, this is the life cycle of Merovingian burial objects. Um, uh, well, the pre-burial life of these objects is related to its production, distribution, use and preservation. And after that, after the loss, which is the ritual deposition, the reuse of the objects again. Um, well, um, in order to give that, uh, to connect these phases before the deposition and to give it a more dynamic uh, character, um, there are two processes that can be introduced and that can connect these station, uh, stages. And these are uh, uh, relations between humans and objects with a temporal dimension that is distribution over time, uh, short times, long times. And that is related, uh, very roughly saying, uh, to the reprodu uh, reproduction of group identities. The other process is uh, related to spatial dimensions, and that's distribution over space, short distances, long distances. And these are more related to the reproduction of society at large. Well, uh, putting these uh, uh, life cycle stages and these uh, spatial and temporal dimensions in a matrix. Um, you can already imagine that in every stage, uh, uh, which are not, uh, the processes are not separated from one another, of course, uh, they, they are connected and the stages are connected uh, too. And in, ov in every um, um, position in the matrix, you can think of different research questions related to one of the stages in relation to another and to the distribution over time or over space. Well, I wanted to show um, uh, the belt fittings from the Merovingian and the uh, uh, strings of beads as examples. Uh, first, the beads. Well, uh, they have uh, special characteristics which are important. They are composite objects. They consist of different sorts of beads. They can be amethyst, amber, rock crystal. Uh, they can be glass beads. They can be um, produced locally or uh, more far away. And they can be golden pendants or altered Roman coins and maybe many other more uh, things. Um, the next thing is that they are predominantly found in the graves of women, but also in the graves of children. But for these children, we cannot uh, say if they were uh, girls or boys. It is very well possible that they were buried in the graves of boys, which will be become clear hereafter. Well, um, because of these characteristics of the beads, and because of an anthropological example, um, uh, I got inspired to think about uh, strings of beads as a more um, uh, in another way. Um, well, the Samburu and their beads, they are living in the east of um, Africa, in Kenya. And um, uh, what happens uh, among them is that beads uh, are worn by men and by women. And the way they are worn uh, is related to social categories. And these social categories are mainly related to age groups. And these beads function in a, in a continuous system of giving and receiving, which is related to age uh, groups uh, and social categories. As a result, a bead collection of a person consists of a, a sort of uh, social biography. Uh, people wearing their beads remember from who they received them. Uh, and have memories attached to their strings of beads or their collections of beads. 
uh, every beat uh, in the Samburu society has a meaning which is related to the to the way it's worn, uh, uh, which position it has on the body, and uh, all the beads have names, and they refer to um, the moment they are generally given or received from somebody. Um, the, uh, the continuous um, circle of uh, giving <coughs> and receiving is uh, related to age and gender, and for the men this is somewhat different than for the women. Um, uh, I cannot go into it uh, very uh, deep, but um, maybe one nice thing um, uh, for the man is to um, to point towards the the more run the more runs, and they become uh, this after they have their circumcision, and that's a moment when they lose their beads so when they ha because they get beads when they are babies and boys from their parents and their uh, and others. So that's why I suggested that the beads in children's grave may be also of boys, and after their circumcision they become a moron and they are starting to lose their beads, give them to their girlfriends and others. For the women, uh, it's a bit different. They also receive uh, beads when they are uh, small. Uh, and uh, one thing is that after they uh, get married, they receive some beads, but they have to get rid of their beads as well because if they acquire too many beads uh, after uh, their marriage, they can be suspected of having a, an affair with somebody else. So uh, that's important not to have too many beads uh, for these <laughs> women after marriage. So uh, that's one funny thing. Well, the Merovingian uh, strings of beads, what I wanted to show, that is um, that we find them in the graves um, <clears throat> as strings, predominantly in graves, and that we have to think about uh, this collection as not a static collection. It may have been um, through phases of transition uh, during uh, the life before uh, they went into the grave. Uh, <clears throat> and many research questions can, of course, be um, thought of in relation to these beads and how to investigate this kind of processes. Uh, my next example uh, relates to the belt fittings from uh, known from graves um, and this, um, uh, this uh, sort of object um, I chose to, to discuss the spatial dimensions of um, 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 objects and how they uh, are distributed over space and how they can communicate concepts about society. Well, the specific characteristics of these belt fittings are, again, that they are composite objects. They have uh, complicated decoration patterns. Um, they are a quite a homogeneous group, but with a certain range of variation. So they can be recognized as a group over a large area and they are, uh, they are distributed over an extended area. Well, because of these characteristics, I want to look at the phase of production and the distribution of symbols. Well, the characteristics um, uh, I, I uh, talked about before um, makes us think uh, when we relate it to the phase of production that there may be um, separate actions involved and maybe also different people producing the, the belt. Um, uh, on the top we see a belt without decoration, below it we see a belt with decoration. Uh, it can be the case that um, the belt was, the iron belt was made by a, by a blacksmith, but that the decoration was applied by a specialist, uh, specialized uh, silversmith. So um, how is the production process related to extended spatial distribution? Well, as I tell, uh, said, they have uh, complicated decoration patterns, a silversmith may be uh, responsible for these patterns and um, um, imagining that uh, it, it, one can wonder uh, if uh, such an <coughs> actor in Merovingian society has an important role in communicating concepts about how the society is organized and what the concepts are and how they are uh, distributed over larger um, um, space uh, to uh, reach other people. Um, um, well, these belt fittings are um, my new research object um, 
Um, I uh, selected all the belt fittings from the province of Limburg and I digitized them. And what I want to do is to separate all the different elements on these belt fittings and uh, to name all these different elements on them, but also to name the, the, the animals depicted on them. Um, and this is an example of um, this work. Um, here we can see, um, uh, I don't know if it's very clear, uh, to, the, <coughs> to the right you can see two uh, mounts of a, of a sword uh, um, belt fitting. Um, the, the upper one is from Italy and you can see the claws uh, of a probably a, a bird of prey. The lower one, I turned it upside down so you can see them better, is from Lent, and that's in the province of Gelderland, that's some 150 kilometers from Maastricht. And it also has uh, two claws on it, uh, on each side. <laughs> and on the, the, the fittings I digitized uh, from Maastricht, the, these, are, these are both from Maastricht, uh, they also have claws, but executed a little bit differently. So it's my goal to, uh, make distribution maps of all the different elements of these animals and see if there are certain patterns um, which are similar and and well I've not done that yet so that will be a future research um, but it's also possible to take a look at the um, uh, objects uh, at themselves and the complete decoration patterns and here we see three um, uh, belt fittings um, back plates and they are all from the province of Limburg. Uh, two are from Maastricht, from the Basilic of um, St. Sefatius. The other one is from Limburg, but we don't know exactly where it is from. What I want to show you is that you can clearly see that these are made by three different sets of hands, uh, or maybe by one set of hands, but maybe by somebody who had uh, good days and bad days, that's also possible, of course. Um, so the questions you can ask if you're uh, looking at production, um, was it made in one workshop or are different uh, workshops um, active? And how did they communicate um, the production of these symbols? Um, are they copies or is there active communication about them? Um, well, that's the research I wanted to introduce you to. And then I'm going to finish again with the buckle in the beginning. And if you turn it around, then you can clearly see a horse head. And that's it. It was not 15 seconds, but... Uh, <laughs>